It's just kind of hard because I didn't see anybody else besides Nigerians who shared that experience. I'm not sure I understand. Me neither. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to the YouTube channel. So, it's your girl Bukola Evis. If we're petty like that, if we're close like that, you can call me Buki. And I have a very special guest for y'all today. Very special, my dearest best friends. I love them so much. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself, <laughs> y'all. Oh, excuse me, what was that for? He did this. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, you are special. <laughs> But yes, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Cynthia Obiakizia. Um, she always got to say her government. I mean, uh, what else you want us to say? Introduce my name is yourself. Rebecca Lee. It's okay. nice to meet you. Okay, anyway, go ahead, love. Hi, my name is Keith. I am not an African, I'm just black. So, <laughs> yes. I guess. <laughs> always got to specify. Just black. Oh, yeah. I'm Nigerian American, by the way. He's Nigerian by association. By association, so, definitely. By association. And he's evil, not Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Don't, we're not gonna do that. I'm not we're... trying to cause no discourse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to cause no, no discourse. discourse. But it's just like, you know, seniority. Okay, but on this channel, this is a Yoruba channel. We don't discriminate. No. But like, if you're gonna no. be a guest on this channel, by so just by default, you're Yoruba. Ah. Unless you're actually like a from a different culture Ooh. in Nigeria. So, no. this is Toby Laba. That's not fair because I, no, 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 no. Oh, this is my best friend. Anyway, let's yeah, get yeah, into the video. Do that. <laughs> do that. Let's get into the video. Territorial. <laughs> <laughs> but in this video, we're going to be talking about individuality and our struggles and our challenges and our successes with. My ass hurts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. But in this video, we're going to be talking about individuality, our struggles and challenges and successes with individuality. So, yes, before I get into all of that, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. Also, your girl got a podcast, so check the podcast out. And also, do y'all want to shout out your socials? Yeah, sure. Follow me, Cynthia underscore ADA, Cynthia underscore ADA on Instagram. That's really it. I don't have Twitter. Um, I don't keep, do TikTok. Tick, tick, Keith Erson with two ends on Instagram and also on TikTok. Gesundheit. All right. <laughs> I thought I was gonna sneeze. Wait, you sneeze? I thought she I was, was going, going to. Oh. That's it did like, it. was like stuck in there. Also, before we get into the video, I just want to shout Keith out real quick mm -hmm. because if you guys have been following me on social media and TikTok, you know this wonderful gentleman right here. He created the POC awards because he saw a need within the community because TikTok only um, highlights white people. Yes, yes, they only do the Caucasians, which is there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna have a platform of diversity and inclusivity, you have and to niches. show all the faces and niches exactly. And he came up with the idea to do the POC Awards, the People of Color Awards. And Pride in our community. Period. By the time this video goes up, I'm positive the awards would have happened. And also, yeah, follow all of us on socials. Don't forget. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, comment to all of it. Where's that? Girl with the aggro with them. I don't probably even like know. Probably like right. Do you see it? Do it. Are we back in 2015 with the way she's like? You see it. Down there. Do it. Down there. So Cynthia, since you're to my left, do you want to kick us off? What has been your biggest challenges with individuality? Oof. My biggest challenges was individuality. Or just like a summary of like how um, you started. Yeah, don't drag it. Yeah, yeah, don't drag it. She be, she be. No, it's gonna it's be like, oh, essay. It's not y'all. It's all make essay. Make it Cynthia be talking. Oh God. My biggest challenges with individuality. Like identity, 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 like finding your place within the world, <clears throat> um, coming to terms with who you are. Yeah, definitely the Nigerian American part is hard, I guess, because I grew up in being in Pittsburgh. You don't see a lot of Nigerians, and then I had a very big Nigerian household, and I didn't have like any of the black culture growing up either. I had just Nigerian cultures, and then I went to college, and it was just like they're like, "Are you even black enough?" And then, "Are you even Nigerian enough?" I, I, so that piece was kind of hard, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, the Catholic piece as well, being a black Catholic in Pittsburgh, a Pennsylvania. Black African Catholic. Bla black African Catholic in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I mean, the African part was easier because everybody I knew who was Igbo was Catholic. Mm -hmm. So that was easier. But being going outside of that Nigerian African community and then being seen as a black Catholic 
generally, it was just kind of hard because I didn't see anybody else besides Nigerians who shared that experience. I'm not sure I understand. Me neither. <laughs> English, I'm not sure I understand. Me neither. <laughs> like, that would only happen to Cynthia. <laughs> that would only happen to her. That would happen to her. Oh, that was perfect. Um, so, yeah. Ooh. I would honestly just say, just like life in general, coming from a household where individuality was never a thing. Um, not being able to voice your own opinions and then you get out into the real world and people are like, so what do you think? It's like, mm. I never thought before. That right, right there. Yeah. So that it's is like, so weird. It's definitely like coming up with your own like opinions and like standing in them because whenever you were able to say anything, you were always questioned. So then you start to question yourself. So definitely just figuring that out, going to a big institution. I went to the Pennsylvania State University, graduating spring 2021. Um, that was also impactful too, just like, Black culture, white culture, so many other demographics of people, Asian, um, African, uh, Caribbean. So just seeing all those different demographics of people was just amazing to see and to immerse yourselves in those things. And I, I definitely um, capitalized off of all of those opportunities. So um, yeah, I think that was just basically finding myself was the biggest thing. Like just to kind of bounce off of what Keith said, like that's one of, that's been my biggest issue, especially cause like, I moved around a lot as a kid. I was in Nigeria, then I came to the States, went back to Nigeria. And even when I was in the States too, I was in New York. That's a completely different culture and melting pot. And then I went to Maine of all places, being the only black kid. But then like, to me, I never understood the concept of race because race isn't something I grew up learning about. Race isn't mm -hmm. a big thing in Nigeria. And then like, Going back to New York where everyone's just, we all understood that we're different, everyone understood their cultures, the African kids with the African kids, and then even that's, they had, there was like subgroups with, within those groups. So I always like fit in. I always was able to like camouflage myself to fit in. I never had to be different. I was just like, well, if you're different, you know you're gonna be looked at a certain way. So I just. Especially in high school, high school yeah. ruthless. Kids is ruthless in high school. Yeah. It's it's sad because like in middle school I was with the anime kids and they were weird. Mm. The kids with the tails, with the that animal run, hats, that run like the, this. The run, I was with those kids. Like I'm gonna be honest, but then I realized like, oh, that's not accepted in society. So when I got to high school, like, oh, let's do a shift, let's be a new person. And it wasn't until I came to college when I was like, yeah, I'm tired of shifting all the time. Like it takes a lot of energy out of like your mental, but also like, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I'm meant to be. I was surrounded by people like Cynthia, for example, who forced me. She didn't like indirectly force me to like find my own voice because as much as like I love her, that's family. She says a lot of shit that just be making my head switch. <laughs> and if you want to keep up with her and be friends with her, like you have to be able to voice your opinion and be firm in what you're saying. And like that's such a good thing to have. You're stubborn towards <laughs> I can't even say nothing. You're twerking! I was like, wait, okay. Yeah, I'm a Leo surrounded by Taurus. So like, I don't even know how it's working, but we're making it work. And that comes down to like, all of us being strong and confident in who we are today. Getting there. We're getting there. But like, it's a journey, it's a step. And you know, like, what steps have you taken to like, help you come to terms? Or like, just accept like, hey, well fuck it, we're here. Um, fucking man. To, honestly, I feel like it's constantly getting there. Mm -hmm. I've, I feel like this year I've really low key hit a wall. Like I thought, ready? I thought when I was in college that I had found it already. I mm -hmm. thought I was so confident in who I was in terms of like, oh yeah, I'm in this, that, and the third. I hold this, that, and the third position. I know this, that, and the third person. I'm going to this conference. Blah yeah. blah blah. blah. Like, I was like, wow, I'm doing all these things. Like, but I think really understanding that you aren't your accolades. Mm -hmm. Your accolades are a reflection of who you are. Extension but that, of yourself. Are, are an extension of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm starting to get into that mindset where I'm like, okay, well, I've done all these things, but what does that mean for me as a person? Like, it's really understanding what your interests are and what they mean as for you as a person, as an individual. Because everyone might be part of this and their club mm -hmm. or whatever, or every activity, but 
it really analyzing what it means for your identity and what it means for your values that's where i'm starting to really become a little bit more strong in like first firstly my faith um in my identity as an Nigerian and then in my identity as an American as well like understanding that I am black American and Nigerian at the same time there are things that I share with black Americans but things that I won't share with black Americans because I have a Nigerian experience as well in this country you know what I mean and whew, when I was part of the BSU <laughs> they challenged that I apologize <laughs> I she apologize. didn't help I did not she help did not because help. I wanted her to pick a side because oh, to me I'm very like oh I'm African then something's gonna change yes. Oh god. I'm so sorry. It was so rough. 2017, 2017, 2018, I will never forget. Huh. Cause both the cause that's when we started the African Student Association, right? Oh y'all just had an ASA. Yes. Oh, okay. we, we started had, that. We had ASA at Penn State. We yeah. had that. Yeah. She wanted to start the ASA forever. And finally when I came along, we started it together. She was the president, of course, because it's her brainchild. Oh, yeah. And me as the vice president. But at the same time, I joined the BSU board. And they all, <laughs> all sides saw it as a conflict of interest. I'm like, yeah. how? And through this discord of me being in the middle and having to figure out like, well, I fit into both sides, I can't pick mm -hmm. a side. And them having to also learn that these are two different facets of the black diaspora. And they don't have intersectionality. Yes, this is really like in 2017 is where we really, really talked about intersectionality. To be honest, mm -hmm. because we had to, because I was like, I'm an asset to both clubs, and I feel like I can't choose one. That's like tearing myself apart. That's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Man, was that hard. And they challenged me every day. Now was they weren't just like, like it's not. Like backwards. I feel like when I say this, people might think like, oh, okay, you were just like trying to fight within yourself. No, they're like, no, you're black. Or they're like, no, you're African. <laughs> no, that doesn't make sense because well, we can do this and that. Like both sides were like, well, we share that experience too. Or yeah, yeah. they don't understand that because. I think that's what people don't understand that like, we had this, we had this, this is, okay, this is the yeah. sidebar, but like the difference between like race and ethnicity. Like there's mm -hmm. just the difference in between those two and like, racially you we are black but our, our cultural upbringing is what makes it differently and exactly. even black people we have our own culture within that's that exactly. so that's where you understand like oh exactly. i am black but also have these separate experiences because i'm nigerian but yes. that's just a little sidebar yeah. that's a do you because i'm still doing my <laughs> yeah. tonight i think it's getting whole, deeper yeah. because deep, i have yes. i even have an issue with part of the that like the labeling because labeling is where it we're not gonna get there but we don't have to yeah we're not gonna get there that yeah. So that's we digress. I digress. Point is, that's where one of my biggest struggles were. But um, and then being Catholic, I had to find my faith for myself and see like. Ooh, organized religion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah, we're in the same boat. It's not for me. Y I mean. Yeah. Anyway, point is, like, I'm not worshiping the church. I'm worshiping Jesus and God. The church is just helping me get there in terms of their organization. Like, but you I can like get there by the yourself. Church. I can get there by myself, but I like. What I like is the prayers that are said. I like the standards of how saints are viewed and different things like that. Like I like how much Mary is emphasized in the church and like Catholic church as well. So I identify with the Catholic church, but I'm not worshiping the church. So whenever scandals happen, I'm like, wow, humans are stupid. But at the end of the day, I like that humans are stupid. Humans are stupid, but I'm not worshiping humans. That's not why I'm following the church. Oh, that, a lot of so, people need to remember and that, that. that. And that's why I get upset when people are like, "Oh, you're Catholic," or or people are like, mm, "I'm gonna leave we the all Catholic church." Bad rep, though. We have a bad rep, but at the end of the day, especially Catholics help don't help this either because people because they'll be like, "I I'm leaving the church because of this, that, and the third. It's like, okay, well, you can leave the church because of scandals if you want, but. That means that you saw the church more than you saw your God, to me. But that might not always be the case. I just feel like... Rope it back in. Too. I'll rope it back in. Yeah. Point is, <laughs> identity, I, I had to find, figure out why like I liked being Catholic, especially mm -hmm. with all the scandals that were happening as well. So that helped culminate into my identity. Where do you feel as though you're at right now? <laughs> me? Mm -hmm. Oof, let's not talk about where I'm at right now. I'm... But, I'm picking up the Be honest, today. this is open because you never okay. know who you're gonna like inspire. Okay, so or right now, resonate with like you. I said, most of the time in college is where I felt the most confident about um, who I was. Right now, I'm kind of picking up the pieces again because I realized, like, after post grad depression is real. <laughs> 
it's real. You all know if you listen and to the podcast, <laughs> I talk about that a lot. It's real. And I feel like Buki is at a place where I want to be eventually, where I feel like after you graduate, there's always this point of like, okay, what now? Who am I now? Like, I, that's why I emphasize like your accolades are not your identity because they were to me until I graduated. Mm -hmm. And now I have to pick up the pieces of like, okay, well, I'm more than my, obviously I'm more than my clubs because I don't have them anymore. So what does that mean to me? Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just trying to ask myself more questions about what I value, um, where I want to go, who I am, what I like, because I am looking to get a master's and I like school enough to get multiple master's, but it's just like, what do I like? Where, who, what's my purpose? Mm -hmm. it's, ah! it's a journey. It's, it's a, a journey. journey. And you it's guys know, journey. like, sorry I don't want to cut you off, but we, you guys know I talk a lot about reaching your final form and mm -hmm. that's exactly what this channel is about. It's not gonna happen today. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. It's a journey. Like in the first video I put out, the question is, what does your final form look like? And it's okay not to have that answer because we're on a path to figuring it out together. Mm -hmm. So take your time with it. You don't wanna stop looking at person A and person B. Compared and to the thief, thief of, of joy. joy. Who said Theodore Roosevelt? The thief of joy. It's in my yes. bio, in my Instagram bio. None of that, I'm sorry. Yes, Theodore Roosevelt. I, 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 I don't know. I've never heard that in my life. Wow. <laughs> I don't <laughs> ask me. I'm not to educate you. I'm not to. I'm okay. not to Let's say it together one more time. One, two, three. Comparison is a thief of joy. Period. So, Keith, what steps have you taken to reach the point where you're at today? A lot of fucking up. <laughs> and I'm yeah. just gonna keep it like a lot, a lot of fucking up. Like, I'm a sociology major now, minoring in psychology. I was um, an engineering major coming into school. That was all it ended up itself. Cynthia can attest to this, calling her crying. I don't wanna do this no oh more. I try, like, literally, whenever you try your hardest so much and it's not working, like, I feel like people you know want to continuously you know go at certain things and i understand that like it's going to be hard in the process but there's a time where you have to reevaluate like is this something that i should continuously do and that's what i had to think like is this something that i really wanted or did i just want to do it because it's going to sound nice i'm going to make a lot of money uh, my parents are going to be able to brag and boast to you know everybody else but mm -hmm. it's not their life to live it's my life to live um so definitely i would say um this past year just really um understanding myself and what i wanted to do becoming more finding my purpose um because i feel i mean i have i feel spirituality just like become very mainstream and i really don't like the word like that um but just really like finding my purpose within and in myself um understanding that certain things that i was doing in terms of like relationships trying to find what i wanted in other people and having to find that in myself and also find out what I like, you know, being a bisexual, a bisexual black male, like that is something that I had to come to terms with. And coming from a household that isn't necessarily, not necessarily isn't, you know, very ex accepting of those things. But knowing that having that stability in myself, you know, and going forward, having the support of these two and a plethora of other people who always had my back, who had phone calls after phone calls after phone calls after, after, tears, after, after tears, tears after tears and just knowing that just because it doesn't go how you wanted it to does not necessarily mean it's not um something that you can learn from um everything is a lesson um regardless of whatever it is there's just a lot i kind of want to just wanna say but i'm trying to think i'm trying to keep it short where do you feel as though you are at right now oh right right now honestly i've never been happier really i know there's definitely sometimes where like i get down and i feel like people will get those moments and it's like dang like i should just be happy all the time like i should just be this great it's like no like people there's gonna be times where you're gonna be down but just thinking about where i was at school and how happy i was and just doing my own self like i love to shake my ass like when, <laughs> like just being more comfortable in my own self and in my expression like it's uh, amazing being around my friends who fully support me in everything that i do um and just going in other spaces and under and like being more self-aware of like how did this being in this area right now how does it make me feel why do i feel this way and noticing whenever i am over analyzing certain things if like just take a step away from it i meditate now which just brings a lot more mindfulness in the experiences that i have allowing my emotions to be there and feel them but not let them fuel my actions because that's how you can just get into a lot of other you know bad situations that you can end up regretting um and just really just like understanding that journaling more um just wherever my mind takes me i just kind of like go with it right now and not try to force it and honestly just understanding that life is crazy it is it but is. it's a cycle life is full of cycles of ups and downs and when you understand that i feel like you can um 
let go some of the pain more. Yeah. So. And see, that's definitely something I did like. I let go of a lot of things in 2020. <laughs> so I ended my uh, two year relationship. We needed to pause and just close that chapter in life. And that's not something that I talk about a lot. A lot of people don't even truly know about that. But um, in order to grow, those are experiences I should be comfortable enough to share. Mm. <laughs> I have mm. to like, my biggest thing is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm. Like there's a lot of things this Ooh, I'm gonna change this podcast. It's okay. about vulnerability. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay, the Leo in me does not like to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I'll, I will say that. And honestly, I think for me, my biggest challenge was finding a balance between confidence and not being cocky. Mm. That was my biggest That's thing. I like that, I like that. I like because that. while I was in college, especially when I was at my all-time high with um, ASA being a thing, with being on student government and being on executive boards and everyone on campus knew, knowing my name, I had a big ass head. <laughs> I had a big ass head and I, was, I, I wasn't cocky, but I did not project that energy in a positive and Mm -hmm. concise way mm -hmm. and graduating from college it's almost like I don't know if this video will be out by then but I would have officially been out of school for a year now and accepting the fact that things are not gonna go the way I want them to career-wise relationships mm -hmm. with my family mm -hmm. and my family life has been much much better mm -hmm. but just accepting that not everything is going to go how you want it to go and that is okay. That's my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to my individuality as a person, I've come to accept that it's okay to like what I like and it's okay to not be the norm. And I mentioned early in the beginning, like I always wanted to just fit in and just camouflage my way through life. Mm -hmm. But you can't keep a Leo down. Mm -hmm. You cannot. And just accepting that like I have a big personality, there's nothing wrong with that. When I walk into a room, I take up a lot of space. That is nothing wrong with that. As long as the space that I'm taking up is not impacting anyone negatively, we're A-OK. -okay. And finding acceptance within yourself, like we all talked about that. Just knowing like you're not gonna have it all figured out. And I would say like compared to myself from last year to now, like oh, <laughs> I am in a much better oh, space. Shit. <laughs> yes, oh my God. Oh, are you OK? No, I just, it's just crazy. Like, I really like, Last year? Last, yeah. year? last year? Last year, I was going through yeah. it. I was oh, going yeah. through it. I was trying to ride through it. I was like, why don't you like me no more? No! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, swear. Like, last year, I was still fighting for a relationship that, look at, where is yeah, it now? That's crazy. Where is Girl. it now? Like, all of us were all having relationships. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Situationship. Bro, last year was a <laughs> Oh, it was. Stressful. stressful. It was oh my stressful. stressful. But look at us today. It's embarrassing. That's what I, I, I can't say anything. Yes. Mom was committed. Oh <laughs> it's like when you think about who you were last. Let's even talk about that. Like one of the biggest reasons why like I ended the relationship was because I was becoming the person I didn't like. My anger, remember how I said like I had a big ass head? I feel as though whoever's gonna be with me gotta keep up. Oh period. Period. And as much as I was going through my negative issues, you know, the struggles of graduating, I was not getting accepted for the jobs I wanted. He was, oh, sorry, love. He was also going through his same thing. But it, it, I was like, what are you worried about? It's nothing. But then that was me invalidating his feelings. So that's something I had to learn to as well. Like, real bit in, sis. Child. Last year, <laughs> everything. I would just say last year was that just it wasn't even yeah. just like just dealing with other people, just like everything, mm -hmm. like school, other people, friends, fraternity wise. I'm a, I'm an oh, alpha, yeah. by the way. I'm an alpha, and just dealing with that, and then I became president of MPHC. Yeah, mm -hmm. Then my family. Then I start switching. Everything. Literally, yeah. a big shift happened mm -hmm. in my life around literally around this time, mm -hmm. and I just it was just a yeah. mess. But like, I, if so, I could talk to that boy now, I would say, yo, it's it's gonna be alright. <laughs> Honestly, if I could talk to him, I'd be like, why didn't we end this sooner? <laughs> why did we drag this out for as long as we did? What would you have said? Sorry! <laughs> she said, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> What's a lot? Whoa. Oh, shit. <laughs> you because I was like, who is she? I'm like, what? I'm like, since you don't like people like that. I'm like, oh, shit. I don't. Yeah. But like, Ooh. this is growth because growth. we could yeah. not have wow. gotten her to talk about this Same. the way she yeah. is. She would have denied it. What are you talking about? What? Like, face blank. 
but that just goes to show you how much in a how much a year maybe even a few months how you mm -hmm. can change when yeah. you really just yeah. like you just have to honestly let go and be and accept whatever is unexpected to come to you yeah. drop the rock um, literally drop the rock you can't control every situation and when you understand that you won't have control and you accept it life is gonna go a lot easier for you because sometimes like even to, it honestly is a small thing sometimes yeah. and I, just like from my own perspective like my mother i love my mom to death but like there's sometimes where she, she's like she's an area she's very good she's like always has something to say and like back when i was younger if she would tell me to do something i would go do it for example when i was like going to get in my car she was like you need to go put some shoes on old keith would be like oh okay i'll put some shoes on now i'm like no i'm not gonna put no shoes on like no i'm okay and it's like just those small things where you understand like wow like i'm starting to you know get get into myself and like no i'm cool i'm okay this one we was late coming here today old keith would have cussed that hoax clean out the phone. i hate being late but then i was just like look man we late at this point there's nothing else i can do about it so we gonna we gonna get there but and we, we are gonna there. get there exactly and look at it here we are filming a video here everything right is now. working out the way we mm -hmm. wanted exactly. we have food made okay but don't make me late ever again hoax. i'm so sorry look yeah, I that's the only thing. That's one like thing I need to work out. Yes. But um Oh, that's a great question to lead up to that. What are some things that we should be working towards? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is your okay, my pants are unbuckled. Right? <laughs> no, like her pants are They're like, it's like Can you they breathe? Are unbuckled. When I sit down I can't, okay? <laughs> when I sit down I cannot. I said let me be comfortable. <laughs> And he saw it, so we had made eye contact. Because you looked down. And then I looked at Buki <laughs> after I acknowledged to him, you better not say anything. I didn't. And did. he did it, but he laughed, and that was enough. Okay, and so what? You would both laugh. I know. So Go ahead, answer the question. <laughs> yeah, what are some steps that we can take oh. to reach our final form? Oh. What are some steps that you're currently taking? Um, or can't take? Or should we change? I think uh, putting the mirror to your face I feel like a lot of people don't do that and this year I've been starting, I mean I kind of always did it but in a way that I smashed the mirror in my face and let myself bleed out and was mad at myself type of thing. Sometimes I be feeling like I be very quick to jump off the cliff but this girl, she will, she will just, I will take, I will take a little drive to the cliff, she be like oh, okay and just end it right there. I'm like whoa, <laughs> calm down. It's like right. she's so dramatic for no reason but then she'll be like I don't Mepe care. Seeker. But anyway, don't smash the mirror in your face. Just look at it and then be like, okay, well, I could put on a new outfit if mm -hmm. I wanted to mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. For example, why I said last year was so embarrassing because I smashed the mirror in my face and I beat myself <laughs> no, up. You crashed. Cr you crashed into a, a <clears throat> telephone pole and then the pole proceeded to fall on your And heart. I let it. So don't be afraid to like evaluate what you did in each situation, but don't beat yourself up. Just take it as like, okay, well, here's what happened objectively and then mm. and then take the next steps it's right it's hard to take it objectively mm -hmm. but you kind of have to like i think people would make the mistake of like not uh, forgetting those two perspectives not even two multiple there are multiple perspectives so sometimes you gotta definitely like take the other perspective and see where you can change where you can fix something or move differently if it needs to be moved differently now it's all up to you at the end of the day mm -hmm. but it'll help you grow if you can really like be objective about your actions and then see what needs to be done um, oh cynthia forgot to add she's not going to be late anymore she's not going to forget her stuff everywhere she's not going to be a oh my god person i, don't I think didn't think know this was <laughs> i don't think i said that that's i think that's what she should but work the important on. thing is I, I it's not that i'm not working on those things but the thing i have to that I tend to do is beat myself up about those things when they do happen because it happens a lot. So, so I realize them from happening. So I realize regardless of what I do, I need to as long as I'm taking the steps that I'm doing something versus beating myself up about it and then forcing everything to happen and it honestly never works out. Oh, I'm just talking about you leaving your key and your phone everywhere. I was like, going into depth of all of that. Well, I'm telling you how I'm conceptualizing it for myself mm. without beating myself up about it. Because having it reinforced all the time definitely like it bothers me because I know it's something that I do But I know it's like if I try to like force it to happen I just end up messing up more and then mm. I beat myself up about yeah, it Don't again. force nothing because so I will be will be Yeah, so I just told myself like okay Well as long as we know we keep these in the back of your mind and every time try to make those changes But don't beat yourself up, up about it every time it happens because it ends up just making it worse honestly mm. 
What was the question? <laughs> what, what, what steps, steps are you taking think? to reach your final form? Got you, got you. Um, so I would say definitely, like you said, trying to be as, like, as objective as possible. I get mad um, when certain people don't do certain things, like not responding or just like being like, just, just certain things that people do. Like for example, like I get mad if like my friends don't respond certain times. I'm like, why aren't you responding? Or if like things don't go my way. But then I have to like think like, I do the same shit. So like, you can't get mad at like of certain things if you do the same shit. But that's just any good question. Um, definitely uh, meditating more, becoming more mindful. That will also help you trying to be objective in situations, trying to like see different perspectives, trying to find a therapist. Go to therapy, mm -hmm. y'all. If you can afford it. If you can afford it, yeah. Okay. Go to therapy Ooh, if you can afford it. This might have to be a plug. Betterment.com, they have therapists and stuff. For... for anything, for everything. Like they have people you can talk to about just really anything okay. that you what want. What is it? Know. It's Betterment. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's betterment.com. Cause I know there was one counseling service and they had a whole scandal. And it's like apparently the people who are professionals are actually professionals. It's just I like hope that's not that Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is what it was for people. Let me they just... say they're therapists, <laughs> licensed, but they're not licensed. That's so, crazy. I'm gonna look it up. Real research. Yeah, research. 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 If you're going to go to therapy. Don't get scammed out here. Yeah. Because I'd be damned. It's funny. It's funny. Everyone's trying to get some. Coins, oh wait, so. Betterment is a <laughs> it investing. Is, yeah. No, it's an oh. investing company. Um. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> well, if you want to get your money up, go to Better. That's why you do your research. Because what? <laughs> That's why you do your research. Well, I'm happy I saw this because I didn't please get my money up. They got savings and stuff on here. Oh, shoot. Because you said better man. Yeah. I'm like, what? okay. That's anyway. Cool. Do things that just make you happy. I feel like that's a thing that I, don't, I personally um, started doing now. Like, if I was like leaving my room, I would just like go take for go for walks it was sunny outside i took my yoga mat flopped it down make a quad lay down in the sun listen to music i do yoga in my room and stuff like that like just do a lot of things that make you happy and that honestly helps because right now my back has been killing me having done yoga in forever but i would just say like that's probably one of the biggest things um and definitely like i said before um try to like in um increase your opportunities to be vulnerable um i read this i was watching this um ted talk by forget the woman's name but she's amazing if you watch grand army um dom when she was in the bathroom she was smoking a blunt it was that lady i forget her name though but yeah watch grand army too that's a great show <laughs> um but yeah so basically talking about like when you numb emotions of like pain fear shame you also are numbing emotions of happiness um and connectivity with other people because whenever you allow yourself to be vulnerable there's two paths that can happen either it can go positively or negatively but if you numb those negative emotions you're also numbing the chance of you having those positive emotions as well so understanding that you have to be vulnerable in order to make certain changes and advances in your life that's that's what life is about taking those chances and accepting whatever outcome happens and moving forward from that mm -hmm. so that's actually Amen. quite the point because i remember at the end of this at the end of last year i said that i don't want an easy 2020 because i know the most growth happens no one got it easy no one got it easy yes. i'm the sorry top 1%, that was they, my fault the top one percent they did and the politicians who decided to pull their stock anyway that's beside the point so um like i realized like i didn't want an easy 2020 because i saw there was so much more growth that. that i had to do yeah it's it's still on my instagram um under one of my pictures that like i realized like I, I was too complacent with who I was. I really was. And sometimes you definitely, again, you have to be uncomfortable to grow mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. If you're a podcast listener, you should know. You should know. Get uncomfortable because that's when. That's when you see yourself yeah. more. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And that, just to kind of piggyback off of you, that's a lot of the steps that I've taken this year. I've done a lot of things that has pushed me out of my comfort zone. Social media being one of them. I knew I was supposed to be on this path, but I was uncomfortable with putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can how can I be like, confident and like be a Leo, but also be shy? And yes, I'm not using my horoscope as a way to define myself. It's just, as a, it's an extension. It's not mm -hmm. who I am as an individual. Because there's a lot of things that make up Bukola, that makes up Buki. Period. My biggest lesson to myself is taking accountability because um i just kind of let things yeah. slide and let things go instead of me to just 
be firm and being true to my words. So Ooh, I have never go accept. I have. I just want. I'm, I feel like this might be going off topic a little bit, maybe. But I don't know. You can throw it in if you want to. Do you think that everybody's a villain in somebody's story? Yes. yes. Period. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm a big villain in a lot of people's story. Look at that. You told me that? Yes. I'm pretty sure that's a quote from somebody. No. That was you? Yes. Cynthia's like, give me my the, quote right. I literally used to say that all the time for like the past four years, I swear. Oh, uh, whoa. Uh, yeah, I, that's why I talk about so much about uh, being objective. Yeah, I don't oh, like, Trust me, I was a puh. Fuck nigga, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> JT, was, <laughs> JT no. was talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> JT was talking about okay. me. No. Woo. I think for me, just kind of taking off of that, it's like, I'm okay with being a villain. And now let me elaborate, like... No, I understand what yeah, you're saying. Like, I don't... I'm tired of caring. Because at the end of the day, and me trying to, like, make sure that you're okay, mm -hmm. and, like, mm -hmm. making sure that you like me and everything that I am about, mm -hmm. I am negating how I feel. Mm -hmm. I am ignoring my feelings. Mm -hmm. So if I hurt your feelings, at the end of the day, if I know, like, deep down I'm happy, and I'm doing what's best for me, and I'm choosing me. Mm -hmm. When I have to choose me, when it's time to like, it's okay to be selfish. Mm -hmm. So that that's been my biggest takeaway, and just accepting who I am. All the negative aspect of me that I chose to ignore because like I just wanted to be loved by everyone. I just wanted to be mm -hmm. liked by everyone. I just let go of all those characteristics that makes up who I am. That is so true. So it's like just accept it, but project it in a positive way mm. as best as you can. Mm. Accept them, know that that's a part of who you are, mm. but just make sure you're not going around like stabbing people in the back or actually like causing pain to somebody. Yeah. As long as you know like objectively you're doing what you feel as though is right, as long as you're not hurting your body. People's feelings are always gonna get hurt, no mm. matter what. No matter and what. You just gotta be okay. Just accept that you're choosing you. And I'm... I'm happy you said it, cause that also ties <laughs> Yeah. The whole POC award. Cool. Yeah, so that's that's honestly my biggest takeaway. If you stuck around yeah. as long as you did for this video, I'm positive you've probably gotten a lot of takeaways. And let I me know down so. in the I because so. I really hope so. Hope yeah, so. and just talking. know it's okay if you're not there yet. Yeah, because I'm again like I said, they're further along than me. I promise. You. Ooh, and it's see, not a race. See, look, look, it's look, right, look, look, right in the Comparison is a thief of joy. Look at, look at, look at her. Look at you. Look at you. I'm not comparing. I'm saying there's characteristics and steps that you guys have taken that I'm like, know. okay. But I'm ready are you to trying to rationalize taking? your comparison? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, don't okay. But at the end of the day, it's like a lot of people could not be friends with us because they always felt as though it had to be a competition. It's not. I think we all accept that our differences are our differences. Like Cynthia's journey is not going to look like my journey. It's not going to look like Heat's journey. And once you accept that, I swear to God, you'll have so much more peace in your life. Mm -hmm. Just accept that your path is always going to be different. That's my biggest thing. Because like, to me, if you told me I would still be having a roommate in Pennsylvania, working in retail, in 2020, the end of 2020, I would deny it, I will fight mm -hmm. you because you're putting a curse on my life. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm still in PA, mm -hmm. I have a roommate, living paycheck to paycheck, I still work retail. By the end of the day, I know I'm taking the steps that I have to take to reach where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So keep on going. Keep, keep on moving. driving. It's funny because I actually take comfort in not knowing sometimes. Why not? At least the that's what I had to accept. Yeah. It's okay to not know. I don't know I'm like, something. I'm, I'm, not, not, maybe, maybe not knowing. Let me say this differently. I take comfort in change and knowing that there, I can always change the You situation. gotta roll with the punches. You see what I mean? That's that, Pivoting. That's that Pivoting. Gemini shit. I like, I'm, that. I'm comfortable with the pivot because I know like this isn't the end all be all mm. of everything. I can always pivot no matter what. And maybe it's like I, I said it in my um, one of my essays. Some people see it as a bad thing because I'm always constantly like just changing but how to get to my goal. Where it's like, but see, like yeah. at the end of the day, I, always, I know I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make that goal happen There's regardless no of what it is. Head. I just have yeah. to shift every now and then. So what? It's I'm gonna, journey, it's still gonna happen. Reason. The fuck? Period. Yeah. yeah. Per. Per, per, per. 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 But yeah, I think that's where we're gonna cut the video off today. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Sound down below how you're feeling. The question of this video is, where are you at in life right now? Are you happy? If you're not happy, sound down below. I'll make sure I will put some joy in your life. I will entertain you. In the next video, maybe I'll dance. You never know. Anyway, yeah, just stop talking, Blue Key. All right, thank you so much for joining, this, joining us in this video. Again, click that like button, subscribe. 
algorithm help me out please i'm yelling i'm yelling because you know it's serious it's very serious i forgot to mention that's what i wanted to say in 20 and now that i that, that the point that i'm <laughs> i am letting myself feel more yes that's nice i always tell cynthia sometimes i really just be there like i never get too happy and i never get too sad i guess that but i never get too i never let myself get too happy it's so weird it's <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sorry. sorry. I know she's not lying. Yeah, I never let myself feel too, too much mm -hmm. because of disappointment. Because my life has been a constant disappointment. By the end of the day, I'm surrounded with myself with people who I know won't disappoint. Period. So, I'm letting myself feel more. That's good. Like, I was sitting, there's, for the longest time, I've had my car for two years. I would never sing in my car. I never used to sing. That I'm so. I know that's I be weird. Jamming in my bitch. That's so weird. I just started doing that recently. It's in like in the past like couple months. I really just finally started jamming in my own car. Like I be singing and dancing. Like I don't let myself feel. I don't know where that comes from. Yeah. Go to therapy. Probably people. a Nigerian household. Yeah. Who knows? Probably. Who, I feel like there's so much more like deep rooted, but I'm not ready to unpack that just yet. <laughs> but I'm letting myself feel more. And if you're if you felt what I said. It's okay. It's okay. Baby steps. Baby steps. Comfort. Just don't and don't get mad if you don't get there right away. Yeah. Look at me, 23. We just started jamming in the car. Mm -hmm. And wear y'all fucking masks. Seriously. Yeah. Please. I'm sorry. Especially if you're gonna go into like a retail store. Wear fucking we don't want to be there. We don't want to have to keep bro. telling you to wear your mask, but just wear it. Help us, I'm okay? Sorry. Also, why are you shopping? Why are you going out shopping? It's still a pandemic. Stay at home. And honestly, if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask with friends and family, don't let them make you feel like yeah. you shouldn't. Yeah. If you feel comfortable, because we all, just do it. Cynthia had her mask on up until like Literally a couple just hours now. ago. Hours. Well, I mean, Literally we've been filming for like an hour. Like an, an hour, hour ago. ago. <laughs> yeah. Because so. I felt more comfortable that way. Mm. Okay, PSA over. Wear your mask. And I will see y'all in the next video. I think it's just gonna be me, but peace out. Peace out, Girl Scout. Make sure you like, subscribe. All our socials will be down below. Okay, <laughs> Mike, run the mode.